Hello boys and girls and welcome to a tutorial on how to use Kate Walk for MIDI sequencing. I'll be using the virtual instrument TTS1 found within Kate Walk uh, for this exercise. Now just to remind you, BandLab Kate Walk is a completely free digital audio workstation that you can download for Windows. Sadly not available for Macs at this current time. It's really rather good and worth checking out. But I'm going to start off with an empty project to see how this is set up. I'm also using a rather uh, let's say low budget laptop here. So I'm going to make sure that for this project I'm going to use the TTS one in what's called multi timbre mode. That means I'm using one instance of the instrument. I think I'm using the different MIDI channels to play different instruments from different tracks within the software. Uh, MIDI, I'm talking about lots of stuff you may or may not be aware of, but very briefly, MIDI is uh, quite old technology now, but very clever, designed in the 80s, designed so that a hardware sequencer or perhaps a keyboard controller could play lots of other synthesizers and things in the studio by sending information down 16 different channels. Imagine a bit like phone lines. Uh, so number one would go to the DX7 or something and play a bass line. Number two would go to the uh, Jupiter and play a nice pad. But we're doing this all inside the box now, and I'm saving on CPU power by using one instance of the TTS1. ETS1 is a virtual instrument that comes free with Cape Walk. So let's look at setting that up now. There's several ways of getting this going, but I like to go via Insert, Soft Synth, Cape Walk, TTS1, and it'll give you this window, which is a bit of a minefield when you first look at it. It took me a bit of playing around. But to set this up in multi timbre mode, you need to have these options here Instrument Track Output. On for stereo, so I can maximize you to the lovely effects that are built into the TTS one. Nothing else selected, and okay, gives you by default four tracks. The TTS one actually has 16 channels in it and plays 16 instruments at once. I'm zooming in so we can have a closer look at these tracks. You know, set up just the same as Logic or Cubase, uh, in terms of you've got all your functionality like mute, solo, automation. Um, but you click on the smaller of the two instruments so to open the actual TTS one itself. There it is. Looks like a mixing desk because it's got like uh, 16 channels or 16 instruments, and you can adjust the levels. You've got up here reverb, chorus, panning, left to right, edit button to get more stuff into the actual functionality of each channel. So you can change some of the synthesizer settings, things like that. I won't do that in the tutorial, I'm going to keep it short. At the moment, it's set up with pianos on every single channel except for number 10 which is a standard drum set. Anybody who's familiar with something called general MIDI will know that it's standard that you have your drums on channel 10. So we don't need a piano on every channel, but let's just listen to this piano though, because it's... Uh... Hmm, that wasn't me playing, I wish it was. But that sounds very authentic. That's free. That's pretty good for free, isn't it? But to change the instruments, I'm going to change the instrument on some of these other channels here. Well, I've used the four track I've got set up. Just click somewhere in that channel, change the preset. That's the bass. Mm, bit of fret space, so that sounds like. Audition button at the bottom there again. Again, I wish that was me playing it, but it wasn't. Very authentic sound, very nicely programmed that. Um, what will complement that? Channel 3, I'm going to set up some different sound. Let's have some strings, orchestra. No, I'm going to go with synth pad, warm pad. That's got to be good. That's got to sound like a Jupiter or something, hasn't it? Mmm, quite delicious. And of course, we've got my standard set. You change out, there's various sets in there, electronic set. Let's close the instrument. It'll be still running in the background. And let's go over here. Left hand side, we've got your inspector all sorts of tools plugged in. Uh, these are uh, like kind of effects plugins that you use, like EQs and compressors and that sort of thing. I'll come to those in another tutorial. But we want to actually change this to the MIDI view. So we've talked about MIDI already, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, where the channels of information are set up. And we want to make sure that these tracks are going to the right instruments. So track one should automatically be channeled to channel one, there it is, and the Cake Walk TTS1, so that should play the piano. Now I've got one of these. It's a little miniature keyboard. Great for travelling. 
I did the fat fingers, but there we are. There you go. I can press the keys on my keyboard, I get a piano sound. So if you haven't got a keyboard, don't panic. You can actually set up controllers on your computer. Let's put like the computer keyboard one on, and now we've got use the um, letters on your computer keyboard. Let's check out these other channels. So when you select the channel, you'll see it kind of goes a beigey color and you know you select it. That should be the bass. Yeah, and this should be the pad. Yeah, this last one. Now it won't be, this will be set to number four. Remember that the drums were actually on channel 10, weren't they? So let's change that, to channel 10. Right, let's just change the octave there to get the kick and snare that I want. To record, don't forget, set your BPM. You'll find that nearly all digital audio workstations are at all level 18, always default to 120. Because somebody great, I can't remember who, once said in the 80s that 120 BPM is the perfect tempo to get people dancing. So lots of 80s pop records are 120 BPM. We also want a metronome. That's this thing here, so I can stay in time. When you click it, you get a setup window. I want it on playback and recording, so I hear the click, click, click. I'm going to give myself a counting of two measures or two bars. If you don't set a pre-count, then as soon as you press record, you're recording and you'll miss the first couple of entries. I'm going to apply that and then close. And right. The next thing to do is make sure you arm or record and enable the track that you want to record on. And because I'm not a computer and only nearly a genius, I'm going to use something called the input quantize here. Switch that on. Now quantize is where the computer works out when you really want to play your notes as opposed to where you actually played them. So if you make an error, it'll put it into the nearest measure for you. Uh, so when you set the sixteenths, if you're a drummer, you'll know exactly what that means. It's like one, two, three, four, digga 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 digga. All right, so it breaks the bar into sixteenth notes. You can have it on eighths, quarters. Halves, you know, minimums, you can have dotted rhythms, triplet rhythms, da, 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 um, whatever you want. I'm going to leave this on 16s. We know it's enabled because the the um, the arming of the track of the record enablers put a little cue in there. So now that the input quantizers on. It's much easier to quantize as you go. If I press record now, I should have two bars of counting and then I can start recording. So there we go. Right, okay, I hit one wrong note in there, but that's okay. You can see down here, we don't have a waveform because uh, we haven't actually recorded any audio. What we've recorded is information, triggers. If I double click on this, get a closer look on what's called the piano roll. You see these yellow bars, there's information as to this note starts here, finishes there, it's played at this velocity, and it's playing this note, which is snare drum. It's triggers, it's kind of like recording my um what i'm pressing as opposed to recording in the audio there's a mistake somewhere there it is didn't want that in there you can select it delete it it's gone all right so you can use this piano roll for editing let's put some piano in and it's another interesting quirk because sometimes i can't hear what i'm actually playing on this one so um i think it's because it's the master track and this computer can't cope with being the master information track and playing the piano and recording at the same time. You find on a higher power computer it should work. Don't forget to disarm the last track. I'll record on that one as well. Select the track you want to record on. So you're picking the right track. I'm going to put quantize back on again. I'm going to arm the track. Change the octave. Change the octave on my keyboard. Record something very simple. Right, so let's record some piano over these this that drum groove. May or may not be able to hear this. Let's see what happens. No, <laughs> can't. Right, 
it, both the drums and the pianos, I've got a couple little quirks out with the quant hasn't quite worked out. I'm going to leave it in the piano, but I um, hadn't noticed that in the drums. I'm going to work out where that slightly off groove was and fix it. Um, that one there, you can see it. There we go. So easy just put in the time. Just nudge it across. Right, this is going to let me go back to trap view. Yes, good. So I've disarmed track one. Oh, well, we could label these, couldn't we? Make life a little easier. Just double click and type. So this is going to be bass. Yeah, I'm going to take the quantize down for this. I'm going to do something a bit more simple. And put the quantize on again. Enable it. I was getting my velocities a bit not quite right there, but obviously I can fix that in the piano roll. Let's have a little look and see what's actually recorded there. So. Just change the velocities there. So um, one of those was slightly out. So I think it was at the beginning, wasn't it? Want that actually there, I think. Same there. And uh, you might like some of the errors you get actually. Quite often, I use quantize, and something comes up, and we go, Oh, hello, right into that. Let's go back to track view. Right. That register the keyboard, I think. Something very simple. Right, who spotted the mistake I made there? Didn't arm the right track, did I? Easily done. Really easily done. So learn from my mistake. Don't want that base. Um, you can undo, uh, yeah, it's non destructive. All right, I'm not sure I really need quantizing on this one because I'm playing very simple parts. Try that again. There we have the very basics of a multi tambour. MIDI sequence. It's just a loop at the moment, so it's actually a loop. Uh, you can go into a function and um, set it out at the moment and loop it. And also, winding them up, you at the stage is, a, um, is you can also balance things out. And at this point in the recording, the audio completely failed and corrupted, so I'm simply overdubbing this last bit. So it doesn't make a lot of sense with the images. Uh, but at this point, we've now got a simple MIDI loop using multi timbral. Uh, sequencing with one instrument and I'm just showing here in the picture that you can also use the TTS-1 because uh, it has a mixer on it so you can start to balance out the sounds a little bit like you would on a mixer so I think I brought the strings down there, brought the piano down to get the groove out a bit more and um, even do a bit of panning left and right you can increase decrease the reverb take the reverb off the bass you don't want reverb on bass do you that sort of thing but that's essentially it folks i'm going to do another tutorial at another point to show where to go from here i need to roll this one out pretty quick for my students so um yeah may replace it one day but hopefully this is useful for you right now and i'll speak to you again soon try for now